Hi everyone, so today we will be learning about molar heat vaporization. Before we jump over to the solving parts, let us first um, understand what molar heat of vaporization is. Um, it is actually um, it, it is actually a counterpart for molar heat of condensation, which will be later introduced in this video. So, um, from uh, clippings from your module, we know that in a process of converting a liquid at its boiling point to gas, energy is absorbed. So, when we have liquid to gas, this requires energy. The process for this requires energy. So the energy may be in kilojoules or joules. Okay, so it is um, it is exclusive for converting liquid by boiling to its boiling point to gas. So when a solid is melted, the temperature of the boiling liquid from solid to liquid remains constant. So this is exclusive for solid or solid to liquid when you're boiling something and the energy is absorbed in the process of changing state however in the smaller heat vaporization we focus on um, this process liquid to gas where it requires energy for this process to occur so when we say molar heat of vaporization we have this symbol H VAP, it's the delta H VAP. Um, the molar heat of vaporization of a substance is the heat absorbed by one mole of that substance as it is converted from liquid to gas. So when we say one mole of that substance, if we can recall the Avogadro's number, we have 16.02, 2 times 10 to the 23. We meant, um, when we say one mole of it, we refer to this value, okay? So, it is, again, it is, this, it is the heat absorbed by one mole of its substance as it is converted from liquid to gas. So, um... So, if you look at this um, from your module, we have when heat is released or as gas condenses to liquid, only then it is referred to as the molar heat of condensation. So, um, take note of this. We refer for the molar heat of condensation when heat is released by one mole so for molar heat of vaporization heat is absorbed while in molar heat of condensation heat is released by one mole of the substance that is converted from gas to a liquid so we can write that one so we say H VAP and delta H con, con or condense vapors. So heat here is absorbed and here heat is released. So, it is actually denoted by um, this vaporization and condensation of molar heat and can be characterized by their opposite signs. So, we have H VAP is actually equal to H delta H condense. 
only this one is negative. We have a negative sign referring that it's the energy released for the liquid to gas um, to occur at its boiling point. Okay? Now we have um, the formula for the molar heat. The equation looks like this. We have Q equals to delta H back times the mass divided by molar mass. So we'll, we'll already know that molar mass is a unit of gram per mole. Okay? And the mass here should be grams. This one, should, the unit for this is should be grams. And the unit for molar mass is gram per mole. And the unit for each VAP can be kilojoule or joule. So when we are referring to the heat released, the equation for this is similar, only that this one is negative H con and mass molar mass. So we have um, the following points that we must remember. First, um, the unit, the unit for moles. One unit for molar heat of vaporization is kj over mole this is the standard unit for the molar heat of vaporization though j per g or joules per gram is used when referring to heat of vaporization excluding the molar term so it doesn't have um, it doesn't include the molar or mole it's just joule per gram well when we're talking about molar heat of vaporization the unit should be kj over mole but if we're only referring to the heat of vaporization we only use j over grams okay so, um, to get the heat of vaporization, we simply divide the mass by 18, 18.015 gram per So, this is the standard. This is used as the molar mass for all processes. Okay? So, to better understand this, Let's answer some exercises in our worksheet. I'm just going to write the exercises down. We have number one. We have the molar heat of vaporization for water is. 40.7 kilojoule per mole. Okay. This statement here is actually true for all. So when we encounter the molar vaporization, molar heat of vaporization of water, it's liquid to gas. The molar heat is always 40.7 kilojoule per mole. So this is true for all water out there. If a 0 0.056 kilogram of water is being boiled at its boiling point, the boiling point of water 
is 100 degrees Celsius. This is at 100 degrees Celsius, the water is boiling na. So, no matter the grams of a water, in this case, it's 0 0.056 grams. So, it's being boiled at its boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius. So, wala na mas mataas ang 100 degrees Celsius. Okay? The question is, how many kilojoule is required? That is the question. How many kJ is required? How many um, kilojoule, how many energy in energy is required for the process to happen? So if you read this problem, we're looking for the heat of vaporization. We're, we're finding out, we're looking for the energy that's needed to um to um for the liquid to gas or um, the liquid to gas process to occur so how much energy is absorbed for that reaction to happen for the change of phase to happen so we simply use the equation given we have q equals delta h pop times the molar mass I mean no mass divided by the molar mass then we know that this is 40.7 kg per mole and this is please take note that this is in kilograms and our molar mass is gram over mole, so we have to convert this one to grams so they match. So 0 0.056 of kilograms, kilograms of water is actually 56 grams divided by the molar mass of water, which is 18.015. So if you solve for the molar mass, of H2O, you'll get 18 point something. Okay? You know how to solve the molar mass by now. This is discussed in your general chemistry 1. It's gram per mole. Now we have 126.52. We cancel out these um, units here. So now we know that 126.52 kilojoule is required as the energy to be absorbed. For a 56 gram of water boiled at 100 degrees Celsius. So I hope that's clear. So how about when we have this problem? So a 90.1 gram of water exist as a gas at 100 degrees Celsius. So a 90.01, I mean 90.1 gram of water uh, becomes a gas if it's boiled at 100 degrees Celsius. The question is how many Joule must be removed to turn water into liquid at 
100 degrees Celsius. So this is the exact opposite of the first problem. We have um, in 90.1, this is gas, it's a water gas, H2O gas. This is an H2O gas, is 90.1 grams. So it appears in the air as 90.1 grams. And we need to remove energy here by condensation and we need to release some energy so this process requires the H condense delta H condense so the question is how many joules must be removed to turn water into um, to turn water into liquid so this water here it's referring to gas it's a water gas yes water can exist at gas phase so this is instead of liquid to gas, this is gas to liquid. This process is gas to liquid. Okay, so we then again use the formula, which is Q negative H condense. So negative because we're referring to a release energy. Then we have mass over molar mass. So we simply plug in the given values. We know that the uh, molar heat of condensation or of uh, condensation or vaporization is it's forty point seven kilojoules per mole. We know this for a fact here when I said that this the molar heat of vaporization for water is forty point seven kilojoule per mole. And it, the molar heat of condensation, as I've said in this case, it's simply the negative of it. So it's the um, energy released. We simply take the negative of 40.7 kilojoule. So we have negative 40.7 kilojoule per mole times 90.1 grams divided by um, its water, it's H2O, it's still 18.015 gram per mole. So if we multiply this, um, these values, we have negative 203.56 kilojoule. We move, we move these values here. But if you look at the given, we're looking for the joule. And we know that, we know for a fact that one kilojoule is equal to 1000 joule, right? We know that already. So we have, we convert this one to joules. So the final answer would be negative 203.56, eh, no, no hundred, negative 203,556 joules. So our conclusion would be um, 203,556 joules is released to turn A 90.1 gram of H2O gas to liquid at, no, at 100 degrees Celsius at its boiling point. So this is how we solve for the molar heat of condensation and the first one molar heat of vaporization. So I hope that's clear. Thank you, everyone.